Welcome everyone. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I made these washboards. I made two sizes. I had the family size and the pail size. First, I'll show you how I made the garden tools. I designed and cut them on my cutting machine. I took a piece of this uh, packaging. It's probably about a quarter of an inch thick. And I'm going to use that to, um, to shape the garden tools. And these, these can be made with the cardstock that I normally like to use from Hobby Lobby, the heavy duty one. I'm going to use my quelling tool to shape all three of these. But for this rake, I'm going to use something a little smaller because I don't, I don't need something so I don't need to have such a big curve. It just needs a little curve. And these pieces were all cut on my cutting machine. I just give it a couple of sprays of water and give it a second for that water to kind of soak into the cardstock. And then I'm taking my quilling tool. I'm not quilling, but I'm taking my quilling tool because I like the diameter of it. And I just press down in the center of my tines and I just kind of roll it or hold it firmly I'm holding it really firm into this foam and getting a good curve on it. And then you can see you come up with that little pitchfork type of curve. That's what I call it. And then don't touch it. Just set it aside so that it can dry that way. But I'm just going to curve right here towards the end, right across my crossbar on the rake and then you come up with your little curve and I'm just going to give it a couple of spritz with the water. I'm going to use this bamboo skewer and here's how that one looks. And again I spritz it twice with the water but I'm going to take my bigger tool and instead of going this way I'm going to go right here and I'm going to give it a little press and then here is the shovel. I wanted to say too that my garden tools are highly inspired by a YouTube channel called Thicket Work Studios. She makes beautiful things. I don't know if she's still updating her channel but I loved it that she used the cardstock, that she used paper because I can't use a lot of strong glues that have fumes. The, she does use a lot of super glue. She saturates it and she covers it with baking soda to cure it really quick and it makes it very hard, she said. I can't do that. So what I did is I'm painting it with Mod Podge and I gave it a couple of coats of Mod Podge on each side. But I just needed something that looked like a garden tool for my, for my general store. So mine are probably nowhere near as sturdy as hers that she uses the super glue and the, and the baking soda. Painting this Mod Podge on, I'm going really light because if I go heavy handed, I'm going to lose the shape of my, if I, I press it too much, I'll probably start to lose the shape of my tools. I wanted to mention too, I'm not sure. I have never downloaded any of her files, but I believe that she, she used to offer a lot of her files for free. So I will put a link to her channel in my description. So if you would like to go and check out her YouTube channel. I'm sorry, I told you wrong. I had to go over this again. I actually painted my other couple of tools. I did wood glue because I thought the wood glue would be a lot, um, would dry a lot harder than just the mod couple coats of Mod Podge. So I did use, a, I think I did two coats of wood glue on each one of these. I only had one, I think it was one bamboo skewer left that was this thickness. So this is supposedly to scale. I looked it up for, you know, the average garden tool, how, how long the handle is. But I feel like if I was to do this again and I had more skewer, 
I would want to go maybe just a quarter of an inch more. I'm going to apply a thin layer of glue that attaches to the handle. I'm going to place my handle right right to the edge, not going into the into the head of the pitchfork, but just right here on the edge. And then I'll just pinch this around. You'll notice that the layers of the cardstock are trying to separate and don't worry about that. I just put a bunch more glue on it and it it holds it. Now all of the handles are glued on and I'm going to paint give them a base coat of black. And I'm not painting onto the handle. I guess you could if that was your preference. But I'm just going to keep the handle the natural color. I think I put some chalk pastels on mine. And you can see with a couple of coats of wood glue, they're, they're pretty sturdy. Okay, I'm just going to let these dry a little bit more. And, then and now I'm just painting it a gray color. I think the name of it, uh, it's from... Anita's, it's called Antique Nickel. And I'm just giving it kind of a quick uh, light coat. It's okay if the black is still showing through. And now I just, I don't have any sea sponge. So I took a little cosmetic sponge like this and I cut a little piece and I kind of pinched off a bunch of it to make it kind of not, not have these sharp edges. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a little bit on there. And then I'm just going to gently here and there put a little bit of the silver. And this silver is called, it's from Folk Art, and it's called 50G Silver Anniversary. I'm not completely painting it with this silver. I'm just touching it here and there just to give it a slight metallic look and this is how they come out looking and now I'm going to show you how I made these washboards I'm going to show you with the large one the family size one but the small one the pale size I wanted to show you that this piece right here is four layers of cardstock and that's how that looks. I did cut this out on my cutting machine, but it's just straight cuts, so you could very well make a washboard without a cutting machine. And then here's the back. I have the four layers already glued together, and I'm going to put some glue on this piece, on all the edges, and I'm gonna glue it to the backing piece. It was really interesting. I didn't even know that washboards came in two different sizes. I guess this is called family size, in case you had a big family and you had a lot of laundry to do. And the other one is called pail size because it fits in a, in a little bucket. Okay, and, and I just used my regular favorite heavy duty cardstock. And I just glued that to the back It'll be something like this. Now this piece is for the washboard. I didn't have a piece of cardboard that was a small enough corrugation for this scale. So I'm going to this little, I'm gonna use this little tool that I made. I forget which video it was in. I think it was the milk cans. I made this little um, scoring tool because I used a scrapbook and I had a scoring tool, but I donated it so I came up with this little device and so I'm just I'm not measuring anything I'm just scoring some lines in it I go a couple of times just to make sure it's it's really it's really scored and I, I cover the whole piece with these score lines and if they're crooked or they run into another line it's okay you won't be able to tell if you get some of the lines farther apart than others that's okay too okay now I originally thought I was just going going to use the side the other side but I thought it looked too soft so I ended up 
just using the side that I scored it from. And now I'm going to give this a base coat of black. You could seal it with some Mod Podge if you want first. I'm not going to. I feel like it's good enough. It's going to have several layers of paint on it. And you only have to paint the one side. I'll lay that to dry. And while that's drying, I'm going to base coat my washboard with a light tan or a tan color. I believe this is Latte from Anita's paint. I don't paint the whole inside because you're really not going to see it. But I'm trying to I'm just trying to get those edges and you can seal this with Mod Podge if you would like. And then that's ready. I'm just going to let that dry. I think this is dry enough now to paint. So I'm just going to use a gray. I'm, I'm really using the same gray that I used on the, the garden tools. And I'm not putting a thick coat. I'm just putting a thin coat. And I'm not covering it perfectly. Okay, and now I'm going to take my little sponge, my little fake sea sponge, and I'm I'm not going everywhere on these. I'm just here and there putting some of the, the silver. And I made a little label. And I know that it's small and no one will ever see it, what it says, but I said that it's a standard family size because a lot of them I saw that's what they put on there and then they had some kind of a number but I just gave it a generic number and I don't remember what that other little part is and then I put Tiny View Washboard Company. I'm making a little bit of a wash with some brown. I think this is burnt umber or raw umber. I'm just giving it a little wash of that. I think on my other ones I used burnt umber. I think this one's raw umber and I think I used burnt umber on those. Okay, because it'll still look cool. And when it dries, if it's too light, you can put a little bit more of your wash on there, but I'm happy with it just like that. And I'm taking some of this Tim Holtz Distress Ink and I'm using black soot and I'm just putting some around the outside of my, the middle of my washboard. I'm putting a little bit of the black around this label edge as well. And then I just press it in. There's how it looks with the washboard in. And now I'm going to put some glue on the back of my label. And there's the washboard complete. I completely forgot to mention at the beginning of the video that I will show you how I completed these saws. I designed and cut them in my cutting machine on my cutting machine. Gave them a thin coat of Mod Podge and then I base coated them in a medium gray. And then I took some metallic silver and I just kind of speckled the blade a little bit here and there. The blade was one layer thick, but the handle, the wooden handle part, is three layers thick on each side. Since some of the handle pieces are really small, especially on this saw, I decided to just go ahead and glue them on first before I gave them a base coat. I'm glad that I did one layer thickness for the blades because they feel and look so real to me, except they're not sharp. Here I'm painting them with my favorite base coat, the Latte from Anita's. I also made sure to get the edge of the saw handle, although in the front or where it's near the blade, I was a little bit more careful and just left it natural. I don't know what happened, but my wash color didn't come out the way it normally does, but I just went ahead and used it, 
and I had to give it a couple of coats. I thought I was filming, but I also took my fine tip brown sharpie and just dotted it where the little nails would be to attach the handles to the blade. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.